Good morning guys and welcome to FairyCoaching.com. This is a video by me and I'm Joke and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Red Rush and uh, how I play it. I've been playing it quite differently from other players for for as long as I can remember and um, it's a popular topic f during our coaching sessions so I wanted to make a little video about it. So. First of all, if we go into the deck list here, we can see that I don't run Cobalt Warbeast, I don't run Bomb Slingers. Those are pretty popular right now in the red aggro list, but I don't run them for one reason and one reason only, and that is the land requirements. Cobalt Warbeast requires two mountains, and Bomb Sling requires three. When I play red aggro, I play really aggro, and I put on a lot of pressure very quickly. I play, can play all my creatures by one, um, by one mountain alone. I don't need to have two mountains for any creature except for the Firebringer and the Hateseed. And those I anyway don't want to play until really far into the game. So I can play all of my creatures by just making one mountain. So I just build neutral lands all the way until I can make a mountain at my opponent's well. And that's when I start spawning. And usually I don't make my second mountain until I am in a spot where I need to play a Flame Burst or a Cypher's Wrath or something like that. Or maybe if uh, if I have to play a second creature, then I need a second mountain if I already stand on one of my other mountains. So this deck is far more aggressive than uh, than what you usually see. And I feel like they're so quick and establish so much uh, value to the Firebringer and the Hateseed buffs them really quickly since I can put out creatures really early uh, running 9 neutral cards for this reason also and the neutral cards are key because I can use them to step onto my opponent's land to place land more aggressively and when I play this deck I want to mulligan hard to make sure I have um, a neutral card in my hand or preferably three, not counting Outcast Tower. Outcast Tower is uh, it's okay. It's uh, it's not bad at all. Usually, by the time they harvest, I'm already at their orb harvesting as well. So, Outcast Tower is mostly for the mirror matchup when you put it to block your opponent. It's basically, oftentimes, gives you six health for zero area yeah, because you can block a Steam Forge Enforcer or a Shedding Pest or something like an uh, Axe Grinder. So yeah, that's the deck list and that's the strategy behind it. So really important, mulligan for neutral cards. Play them when you're close enough. You don't have to play them on turn two. And um, yeah, and then just make sure you establish neutral lands until you can get one mountain in a good position. And from there, you make the second one when you feel like it's necessary. And a good thing about this deck is that if you manage to establish a, a mountain at your opponent's well and summon creatures there every turn, you will always have fourth area. Which means if you use the plus one ability, you will be able to play every card in your deck except for the Steam Fortune Enforcer. I'm not counting hate seed here because it will be reduced cost and if it's, if it's not you won't play it anyway. So the only card you won't be able to play every turn is Steam Fortune Enforcer. Everything else you can drop every turn. Alright, so that's it. That's my red aggro list. Alright, so we have a game and it's against Mayhem. So this is... Uh, horrible starting hand. I definitely want to have my neutral cards. That is really important to me. Double Outland Ranger is amazing. It would have been really nice to, since I'm going second, having um, King's Faithful is really nice because then I can drop it right here if my opponent makes double neutral forward. Looks like Mayhem is not going to go aggressive just yet. So start to open with our double prairies. And my goal is to get this spot right here or this spot right here. So now this is a little bit scary. Our opponent puts down a mountain. So 
He could have a Cypress Wrath, so I'm considering using Campfire just to dodge that. It could still die to a Flame Burst, but at least it gets out of the range of a um, Cypress Wrath. And by the looks of it, unless he plays an elemental, I will be able to get that land that I'm desperately wanting. So at this point I can just go face, drop an explore, drop my mountain, put down a shedding pest, put down an outland ranger. So already I have established a whole lot of um oh this is bad i established already a whole lot of pressure and all of this from just one uh, mountain i'm going to be able to cypress ref this one to to go face or i can also just clear it and take out the underground brigand if i take out the brigand instead i'm going to prevent him from being able to get that two extra feria so i think i'm going to go with that play and I'm gonna keep my Shedding Pest standing on this spot just so I collect Fairy next turn as well. Oh, so this looks like it could be a Wish deck. Certainly a Wish deck. And uh, my opponent, if my opponent finds my cards, I'm not too sad about that. The heal is a little bit annoying, but I will put on pressure far quicker than my opponent can deny it. So here I draw a card, which is bad. I should have drawn before, but um, I'm making a video at the same time as I'm talking, so I'm not fully focused. I just want to show you the importance of the land and how you really don't need the you don't need so much um, like you don't need to get a mountain quickly just having the one was enough until i felt like i needed to use cypher's ref in this case it was kind of early but that's not always the point always the case so here we took a very quick win All right, so our next opponent is Nightingale. And let's see what I can find in my starting hand. I have a King's Faithful, which is nice. Um, I'm gonna mulligan the Outcast Tower and the Firebringer and hope to get some more neutral creatures. No, but, all right, so considering I'm player two, I could drop my King's Faithful already this turn, but in this situation, doesn't really matter unless it's playing yellow rush so I'm just gonna pass the turn here if I drop my King's Faithful here next turn it's gonna be quite difficult for him to remove it and um, oh not anymore but it, he's gonna have to sacrifice a lot to get rid of it and next turn I can hopefully uh, explore into mountain. Let's see if he makes double neutral. No, he does not. So that's good for me unless he has an air elemental. Okay, so actually if I clear this windstorm charger he won't be able to take this land even if I make a mountain this turn so I'm gonna make a mountain this turn and I'm gonna make the mountain on this spot so and then I put the explore here because this way I'm blocking his lands he could of course with a wind soldier but then just make a wind soldier to deny me this land is quite costly for him. Oh, 
also our, our dream fanatic would have been able to do it as well so it was maybe a little bit risky but um, feeling pretty okay about this so far and here I'm gonna flame burst the outland ranger just to not let him get too much fairy should have maybe done it last turn no I drew it no I drew the king's face one yeah I should have maybe done it last turn all right so it looks like he's gonna go harvest here so my lands are already completely set up from here on I'm just gonna draw a card or gain fairy whatever I feel like I need and hopefully I will be able to draw creatures so I can summon one creature on this spot each turn just to get that one extra fairy it's very important Nightingale is struggling considering what to do here looks like he's gonna oh what is this orb oh he was hovering over something looked fancy okay so he could maybe drop something like a uh, windborn champion move it again and start attacking face My Firebringer and Hatesheed are not good enough just yet, so I don't I really don't want to play them, but at this point it looks like I don't really have anything to play. Oh, my opponent is disconnecting. Oh well, let's just surrender this game then. Let's try again feel like I had a decent grip there depending of course on what he was gonna do there but all right so all right our opponent is Nightingale this starting hand I do like I like it a lot the axe grinder is perfectly fine I actually really like if I open with three times um, uh, three times outland ranger that is really nice I feel but then of course you can get absolutely destroyed by cards such as vampire but yeah Kaleem you can maybe threaten Kaleem with a steam forge enforcer So I'm gonna go here, explore, make sure I get my very important land and from here on not sure if I want to put the axe grinder or the faithful, I think I dropped the axe grinder so I have a little bit of extra fairy for next turn you could just clear it though but it's a bit risky for him to do that so I'm a little bit worried about a vampire or a wind soldier looks like we're gonna see a charger if that's it okay I'm gonna managed to get a lot of damage this turn this is really good so since I don't really care about making any more lands in this spot I'm just gonna make it a, a mountain even though I don't really need a mountain right now but I need something to get in there so mountain will be just fine and then I'm gonna drop a king's faithful right here and um, yeah from here it's gonna be quite difficult for him to stop me okay, 
so what can you do here really to come back vampire here won't really do too much I mean I have I will have a really cheap heaps hate seed as well it will cost two fairway if I first drop the outland ranger you can get a free claims follower that you could just put here to not allow me to attack with both creatures but even if it does that I feel like I'm in a good good position you could start teleporting my guys around but yeah my hand is pretty okay so even if he would do that I feel like I'm in a good spot <coughs> What is he gonna do? Alright, so here's a Desert Twister to... Alright, this was a good play from him. Definitely a good play. This way, after I clear this, he can just move uh, Kalim's follower on there as well. But unfortunately for him, I do have the Outland Ranger. So I'm gonna step over here. This was a little bit of a misplay. <laughs> Oops. Should have um, put the axe grinder here and the outland ranger somewhere else. Probably. But at this point, I can probably just start dropping another hate seed. Just to have extra much um, pressure and collect feria from two sides. So in this situation, even if he drops a creature in front here, it won't really save him. But he has a lot of fairy and five cards, so he might be able to do some good clearing. But since he wasn't doing it last turn, well, he did do a pretty good turn last turn, but since I had the Outland Ranger, it kind of messed with him. So we'll see. All right, so he's drawing a card, trying to find some answers. I certainly looks like I'm in a great spot. Yeah, that's that's game because I have the flame burst. And there's even a cypher's wrath, so GG. Right, and uh, that's how I do when I play red aggro. I mean Sometimes I lose terribly because my opponent uh, blocks these lands. Then I'm almost always losing. And uh, yeah. It's really important also to have a good starting hand. Like most other decks. But since you have so many cards that are good in your starting hand. Well you have 9. Which is almost 30% of your deck. And you can mulligan. And you don't need to have all 3 neutral cards in your starting hand either. So yeah. There's only really a few cards that are like really bad also. I mean, Shedding Pest and Axe Grinders, they're not that bad. What's really bad is if you start with Firebringers and Hate Seeds. That's what you really don't want. So, all right, that's it for this episode. Thank you, Nightingale, for helping me out with showing some games as well. And uh, good night, everyone. Remember to check out fairycoaching.com if you think this is... Um, helpful and leave some comments thank you